Hey everyone, I'm here today with a flip through of my personal doodle journals. I called it Art Experiments because I really was experimenting. Plus, I'm a moderator for Caged Fish on YouTube, so it just seemed to work well together to use this for the title of the book. And I started in May 2007. This was purchased from Walmart for $4.98. It's in the very back section of my Walmart store. Um, and I put a tag because when I put stuff on the bookshelf, all you see is spirals. You can't see which book you're pulling out. So I took some of Shannon Green's leftover vinyl. I will give a link for her Etsy store down below in the description box. And I cut it, poked a hole in it with my, I don't know, that thing that pokes holes. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, so I poked a hole in it and doodled on it, and so I know this is volume one because I actually have three volumes. So this is volume one. All right, so let's do the flip through. This is for my friend Vicki Schultz who's trying to learn how to zentangle, and I say, you're doing a great job, girly. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I guess I need to move you in just a tad, although not too much because I seem to keep getting out of frame. All right, so there we go. There's my first thing that I did. These pages are very thin and not meant for watercolors or anything like that. So I went ahead and glued two pages together to give it a, a little more strength so that I could do watery stuff in between. Of course, it makes stuff buckle, but I don't really care because this is just for my enjoyment. So this was something I copied off of someplace. I think this is a Lisa Congdon thing, but I can't remember. All right, this is a single sheet. I did this on 5-23-2017. Again, these are things, doodles, I've seen on Pinterest. I get a lot of things from Pinterest because it helps me practice my skills, and it's free. It's free. So I use a lot of Pinterest. And this is uh, some of these birds, and if I could think of her name right off the hand, I would tell you, but she does stamps, rubber stamps with these birds, and these birds are so charming. I can't get over how cute they are. Then these are just different kinds of doodles, multi-petal flowers. Oh, let's see, is this one glued together? No. All right, this was another Lisa Congan experiment that did, I don't think it went well, but, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. These are all single pages. You see it goes through on the back. So after I get into this book, book a little further, I do glue the pages together. Here's a Lisa Congdon experiment. I joined Creative Bug and started taking some of her online classes through Creative Bug. Again, I will reference it down in the description box. And this was one of the things to paste paper on it to make it sort of a mixed media thing. These were done with Micron pens. This is watercolor, just taking a brush and swirling it and then drawing inside the watercolors with Micron pens. And I think I use Jack, uh, Jack, black jelly pens on these two. Sometimes they don't write so well, but I did give it a try. And here's one I did on a book page and just glued it in here. I kind of like the way it looks glued in here. Maybe I should doodle around the outsides. I don't know. I'm starting the, yeah, this is the first page that I glued together. So all these are glued together now. Again, this was just something that I got off of Pinterest. And then I watercolored it. I think I watercolored it after I drew on it, if I remember correctly. Would have been okay either way. This, again, is just a doodle from lots of different places. They are everywhere. And I don't think, see, look, I didn't even finish it. I think I got bored making all those little things and stopped. This is done on watercolor paper. Oops, sorry. This is done on watercolor paper and I just took it out of the tablet. It was a little small, cheap tablet. I should use the word cheap. An expensive tablet that I ripped the paper out and then I glued it onto here. This is done with watercolor. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the watercolor. I think this, these are koi watercolors or maybe they're the Prima watercolors, you know, these little things like this and the little pan sets, the little travel pan sets. Might be that stuff. I don't remember. It's been so long since I've done it that I just don't remember everything about it. 
Here's something else done with watercolor. This was a Lisa Congdon exercise where she did um, watercolor squares and then just did a certain amount of doodles. Tried to keep it, I think she had like three to five and then just repeated the same doodles over and over on the page just in different squares. I really like this. And here is me practicing a handmade stamp that I made from Fun Foam. And here's another Lisa Congdon exercise with the watercolor squares and then drawing the doodles inside the squares. Another thing with the watercolor paper, I can see it's trying to come up a little bit. Uh, don't particularly care for what I used for this one. I'm not a big neon color sort of person. And I, I don't, I don't know, it doesn't really speak to me that much. You know, you don't always like everything you do. And I think it's okay not to like everything you do. You learn something from it anyway. Um, this is, again, another exercise that Lisa Congdon just did the watercolor. And these were done with some kind... These were white jelly pen drawings. And they don't show up very well. Even here in person, it's hard to see them. Again, experimenting with another color with different shades of purple and lavender. And this is uh, doodles done with white jelly pen. And it's very hard to see. Here's another blue one. There's Now this one is done in pinks. And this is a specific flower that came off of Pinterest. It's all little tiny lines. What you do is you take your pencil and you draw the flower and then you draw your little lines inside the petals. Very easy to do. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It was a time-consuming task, but I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. And I'm also liking this one too, because like I said, I'm, I'm a, my favorite color is green. This is a very lime green. I'm not used to bright colors. I'm more earthy tone person, but for some reason, I just love this. All right, here's another one. These are again flowers that uh, I think I got off of Pinterest, and it's in the style of Lisa Congdon. You'll see a lot of her stuff in this book because this is during the period when I was taking her online class and I was trying to practice that stuff. This is another one of the watercolors with the shapes, but instead of doing everything in black, I did green on green, blue on blue, purple on purple, yellow on yellow, which you can barely see, um, red on pink. It was fun. Not necessarily my favorite thing, but it was fun. This was for iCAD. I was practicing how to make this little fat sheep for an iCAD card last year. And it's kawaii. Kawaii is the kind of art it is. They were a lot of fun. They're cute. This is a red thing, kind of done in Lisa Congdon style again with the squares. I did some stuff in white, and I think these are white jelly, and then some, I don't know if these are Poscas or not, I can't remember. This is just circles, circles within circles within circles, and then I took a black marker of some sort and colored in all the empty spaces in between all the circles so that the circles would stand out more when you look at them. This is a Lisa Congdon exercise. I bought the Koi watercolor brush pens that she used, except for she bought, she had the more expensive set and I bought the less expensive set. So I had to work with what I had, but she was just doing little blocks of color, like, you know, very thin blocks of color, and then she doodled over it. My watercolor pens were more bright. She used more flesh tone type things, monochromatic. I'm not crazy about this, although I like the doodles, but not crazy about the colors behind them. This is just lines showing how to make things look like how they're overlapped. It came from Pinterest. This also came from Pinterest. This reminds me of zippers. I don't know why. It reminds me of the teeth on zippers, especially this one, the round one. It's very weird how I react to this one, but I like it. Here are those flowers again that were on that pink page that are just the lines. And you can tell I switched pens. This was a, a fatter, more darker 
a more dark pen and it was more juicy. I think I was running out of ink on this one. I started out really well and then it started going downhill. I think I was running out of um, ink there and that these were done with a Posca .005. Here's something else I saw from Pinterest, just drawing lines. I love line drawings and repetitive patterns. This is not Lisa Congdon. Um, I don't know if I'll get this person's name. It's Marimiko. Mari Marimeko or Marimiko. I tried to match the colors in Pinterest as much as I could with what I had. But I really like this. And they're more mic type colors. They're not bright in your face sort of colors. I like these. They're more muted. This again came from Pinterest. It was another, another exercise in combining different elements together to make them look like they're overlapping. I love this picture, love, love. And these are Lisa Congdon flowers. And I just love them. I'm kind of rigid in my art where, you know, if there's, it says color inside the box, I color it inside the box. And then I doodle inside that. But Lisa Congdon was doing an exercise where you just do the swirl of color and then she would doodle inside even though it's not round and follows the form of where you painted. I had such a good time doing this and I felt this was very freeing for me to learn that it's not always about staying inside the lines. I really like this one. This one makes me very happy. In the KonMari thing of doing the cleaning out stuff, does it bring you joy? Yes, it does. Again, same exercise, same type picture. I must have, oh wait, it's because it's upside down. Eh, wrong page. This is another long uh, line making um, geometric drawings with sort of triangles and that kind of thing to make them look like they're laying one on top of the other. My favorite kind of stuff to do. This is Lisa Congdon. This is another one that brings me such happiness when I look at it. I just, just love it. And I did not stay inside the lines of the color. It just made me so happy. And this one makes me very happy too. I drew these first and I saw that someone else had drawn these kind of things and then they shaded them. So I had a little bit of watercolor of two colors that were kind of close together. And I did the light one in the middle and then kind of brought the, I don't know anything about watercolors. I just thought it looked cool. And I like this page. Let's see. These are mushrooms, and this woman's name is Eloise, oh, it's R-E-N-O-U-F, and it is on Pinterest. That's where I got this from is Pinterest. I was trying to learn how to do depth, and um, mushrooms were an easy place to start. I am a huge fan of Rebecca Blair's work. She was some kind of an art student or technical art or whatever it was and she posted her stuff on Pinterest and I have to say I am crazy about this stuff. I love doing this kind of stuff. It doesn't take a lot of brain cells to do this if I can say that so impolitely. It just, you just draw. You don't think about it. You just do repeating patterns. And then I took a little bit of washed out black watercolor and went in between the um, pieces here. Love her stuff. Love, love, love. And you'll see more of it. This one was where I was, I wanted to use leaves and different things, but I had to figure out how to vary the insides of the leaves. And I found a thing on Pinterest where somebody did different kinds of drawings inside the leaves. And I really enjoyed doing that because it taught me that it's not just, you know, the lines you go like this or the rounded lines on all the leaves. This again is a Lisa Congdon sort of thing, inspired drawing. Again with the ripped colored paper at the bottom. These were pictures that I just got off of Pinterest. I did the watercolor squares and I just drew stuff inside them. They were fun. Again, this is another Rebecca Blair uh, Pinterest inspired drawing. Just the geometric stuff, the lines, the circles, and that's all it is. It's so much fun to do her stuff. This was something I got off of Pinterest, but I honestly don't remember who the person was that did this. 
Mine's not exactly like theirs, but it's close enough that I probably should give them credit if I could only remember who they are. I'll have to go back and look through my stuff. Where I could give credit for someone's name, I usually try to. Again, this is another Rebecca Blair type doodle. This is not exactly like hers, but a lot of the shapes and stuff were inspired by what she did. And it's very cool that it's only half, and it does it's not like centered in the middle of the page. I have issues with that, too. Very rigid. And so I'm trying to loosen up how I draw in this book. And doing it half was sort of like not doing inside the circles of paint. It's very freeing. This was done on black cardstock with a white uniball pen. And here's another kind of, um, it's kind of like Rebecca Blair and Lisa Congdon combined together. Just doodles inside of black and white. Most of this was done with a black jelly or a micron pin or a white jelly or a white Posca. Oh, this makes me so happy too. These are Lisa Congdon flowers. And it's a double spread. They're just very whimsical flowers. They're not necessarily anatomically correct for a flower, but they just are so happy and wonderful. Love them. And I, again, I'm playing around with different patterns, trying to combine different things, learning about leaves again. And here's another attempt at the one I did with the colors I didn't like in the background. So I used watercolors in this and did lines of watercolor. I like it better toned down with the flowers drawn on top. The other one was too bright for me. Just fooling around with different kinds of pens on the with black. I think this is a black marker of some sort and these are Posca markers with the white. Same exercise, exercise as I did before on other pages, but this one, I inserted a square inside the circle here, like it was ripped and in through it like that. That was fun. I'm still learning. Every time I draw, I learn something new. Here's another one where you've got two squares that are kind of inside each other, and you can kind of see, you know, they're interwoven. Um, this was from Pinterest. Strictly lines, that's it. There's nothing else. And then you outline it in a dark marker. This is another Lisa Congdon composition that are her flower, her kind of flowers. I love this one too. And, and they're more muted colors, except for the orange. They're kind of muted colors. And I like the muted colors, but they're still a little bit bright. Bright enough. These are leaves called a clamshell leaf. I had a good time doing these. Again, I'm into the repetitive drawing stuff, trying to experiment with different shapes and sizes of leaves. Here's another Lisa Congdon flower composition. No green was used for the um, leaves and stuff. It was strictly about the heads of the flowers in there. This one was uh, Miramiko like fabric. They This person does a lot of fabrics, and so they showed some fabric that had the leaves on it and I really like the leaves because it's not they're not all shaped the lines aren't all the same and then I watercolored them this one was something that again came off of Pinterest and all I did was draw stuff on here and then I colored in the black with a black magic marker the empty spaces so that the leaves would be more visible and they would stand out just shapes this one's called smug mug by M. Rob. This is Tanner, T-A-N-O-R, from Russia. The watercolors and then the overlapping flowers with the overlapping watercolor. I like this. I like the colors. Bright but yet muted. And I think these are the Prima watercolors. Here's another one that came from Pinterest. Not as crazy about this one as some of the other things I've done, but it's still okay. And again, I like the repetitive line shapes inside the shapes. They're fun. I don't have to think while I do them. All right, this was a compilation of a lot of flowers that I found on Pinterest. And I drew them first, then I watercolored them. 
And this is my favorite one right here of the whole business. This section right here is my favorite one. I really enjoyed using just dabs of watercolor, just a little bit of watercolor on everything. It was a lot of fun. And guess who again? And this is my, uh, I have this image, I think for Facebook, for my Facebook image. And I took the picture of this. This is a fun exercise. All you do is just take round watercolor and make little ovals. And then you do the black line. Then you do the colored line so that you don't go outside. It's, it is coloring within the color structure that you set. This is again another Lisa Congdon inspired flower composition. Trying to make the flowers basically all the same color. This came from Pinterest. These were watermelons that were taken off a page. I love watermelon. I have a collection of watermelon glassware, so I really like watermelons. This is kind of Rebecca Blair-ish, where you just do lines and lines and lines and lines of different patterns. I got into drawing fish because of this right here. I saw this on Pinterest. This is called Fish Face, and it's cookie and... I guess she did it on 12-31-2010. And I love these fish. You just draw one set of fish and then you draw the other fish in between them and then you can make them rainbow colored or uh, these are all gray. Then I found another fish on there where his mouth also makes his eye. I just love drawing the fish. That come, that All this fish inspired stuff comes from, you know, being around Carla at Cage Fish. <laughs> Here I was working on something where I was trying to draw different kinds of cute fish and so that they were underwater. Never finished it, but who knows, I may revisit and finish it later. These are pumpkins that I drew, and yes, these came off of Pinterest, as well as this apple composition. This is inspired by, oh, let me see if I can get this, Kalika, Kalika, K-L-I-K-A design. I love the simplistic, the simplistic fruit. Not a lot of detail, but you basically get what it is. That's an apple, that's an apple, an apple, a pear. You know, they're very simple drawings, but you get what they are. Same with the, the pumpkins. Simple, but you understand what they are. Flowers. This was done in black and white, and then this is by Margaret, Margaret Berg. And then I colored in with the watercolors. This one is from Mar Wynn, M-A-R, capital W-I-N-N. -N. I liked these. These were very simple. This is kind of in the same style as Lisa Congdon. Here's another one from Margaret Berg. This was Tulips. And I don't remember where this one came from, but it was in that, it, it was in the same tablet where I tore out the other sheets, and these are just paintings of fruit. All right, so there's volume one of my art experiments from May 2017 until I started the next one after it. All right, so there you go, Vicki. I showed you my beginnings, one of my beginning books. I expect you to do this. <laughs> You will do this. Because look, you already posted a lovely picture on um, Facebook and it was fabulous. Keep going. Don't stop and don't let anybody tell you how to draw. You know, you can use someone else for a reference point, but after that, what you do with it is all up to you. I mean, I love Lisa Congdon's stuff, but I combine hers with other people's types of flowers and then I find where my style is. I know the colors that I like. I tried other colors and found out I really don't like them. I know what I like. And if my taste is not the same as someone else's, that's okay. That's what makes us artists and individuals. So I want to encourage everybody to go buy yourself a $5 book from Walmart and doodle yourself into a frenzy. See you later. Bye, everybody.